All right, hey everybody, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography, and today I wanna to talk a little bit about light shaping. I've talked about this a lot, so shaping the light in post-processing to accentuate or de-accentuate different elements within your composition. Now, you know, as humans, our eyes are drawn to the brightest parts of an image. We know that. That's been proven. Life is great. So we know that we respond to light visually. So for us as artists, how we treat the light, both in the field during our composition and capture, and then in post-processing, how we deal with the light to draw and guide the viewer's eyes into parts of the image that we want them to go to. And, you know, it's really not as difficult or as complicated as it sounds, and I'll show you a few different techniques to do that. The other reason, besides guiding the viewer's eyes, the other reason that I really like this concept of, of shaping the light is that it helps to bring some depth and dimensionality to the image. You know, we're shooting 3D subjects on a 2D medium, and whatever we can do to bring some depth and dimension into our images is really a bonus. And so I do a lot of work with uh, dodging and burning to bring back or bring into the image some of that depth that I saw with my own eyes. It's real easy to do. It's uh, you just, uh, you know, with brushes or maybe a radio filter. Um, it's a very, very, very easy technique to learn and then apply in your own images, even if you don't do a lot of post-processing, sometimes just a little bit will help a lot. So let's go ahead and jump into a few images and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's go ahead and jump right in. One of the first images that I wanna look at is from the Palouse. Now, if you've ever been to the Palouse, you know it's wide open wheat fields, lots of rolling undulations, and it's really the shape of the landscape that makes a lot of great images up in the Palouse area. And, you know, you shoot these shots oftentimes with a medium or a large telephoto lens, kind of compresses the landscape a little bit, but it lets you zoom in on particular areas, which is great. But because of that compression and because of oftentimes the flat light that you'll get in a raw file, you need to do a little bit of work to bring back and accentuate the depth and dimension in the images. So as you see this, don't look necessarily at the subject, but look at the distribution of light throughout the images. So if you look down here right at the bottom, it's a little bit dark. Then there's a light layer right in through here. Then it's dark, then it's light, then I get dark up here, dark goes all the way across, and a little bit of light back here. So those are things, those are, those are tonal values that I can use to bring that depth into the image that I want. And one of the easiest ways to do that is dodging and burning. And you can do, you can sort of fake dodging and burning in um, Lightroom. I choose to do most of it in Photoshop, and I'll show you a little bit of the techniques for that. And, it, you know, here's a little thing to maybe help you remember the difference between dodging and burning. And, and this is something that I uh, clued in with a long time ago uh, to help me remember which one's which and particularly burn. When I think about burn, I think about burnt toast. And so that means blackening or darkening the toast. And so I always equated burn with burnt toast and that was always darken versus lighten, which is dodge. So the, one of the easiest ways to do this in Lightroom is with a mask 
and the brush tool. And when you are creating a brush mask for dodging and burning, think about creating one layer for lightening and one mask or layer for darkening. And what I typically advise people to do is to really adjust the flow downwards because you don't want a huge effect. You want to you want to really feather in the effect as much as you can. So I set my flow to around 17 or 18. And then and then you can pick whatever size works best. You can use the slider or the bracket keys. The left and right bracket keys will make the the cursor bigger or smaller and then you can change the feather. I don't want that much feather on this. But let's go ahead and do a darkening layer first. So let me go here and start to kind of paint this dark layer in through here. You know, and if you want different dark values, you might have to create different layers. But so there's the first bit of darkness I want to accentuate. This little bit right in here I want to accentuate. Then of course this big hill I want to accentuate, get it a little bit darker than what it is. And I'm just doing this real quick for you for this video so I don't waste a lot of time. And if you, you know, you can do a single pass at 18% and it'll just do a light flow on top. Or you can go over this multiple times and increase the density of the mask. So let's go up to this darker area up here that I want to accentuate. Maybe just a little bit right in there. Just the brush eyes down. I want to target this area. And so there's all sort of the dark areas that I want to, got one more little one, that I want to um, darken just a little bit. So with those painted into, I will then take my exposure slider and go down just a little bit. So I went from that to that, from that to that, and it really darkens things up nicely. Then to create a light or a, or a dodge layer, I'll go up to create new mask, I'll go to brush, and then I'll again paint in those areas that I want a little bit lighter. I want the brights a little bit brighter than the darks or more effect. And so I'm going to increase my flow a little bit just to save some time. We'll go in here and we'll paint this bright slope that I like. We'll come in and do a swath through here and raise this up. A little bit on this hillside and then a little window light back there and then I'll take my exposure slider and go up so we went from you know that to that it's really creating some depth and dimension into this Let's say I want to go back and adjust the shadows or the darks, the, the burn layer. I can go back to this mask and select it. And then maybe either I can choose uh, to move my exposure some more or I could deepen the blacks. And it really takes some of the, the darker tonal values in, the, in this mask and really adds, darkens the black values within those tonal values. So you can see I went from this let me get out of the mask area. I went from this sort of flat all the way to that. And I really now have these layers of dark and light. And, and the last thing I do to every single image is I go through and I'll add a vignette. And each, it just, the amount of vignette depends on each image. But what it does is it darkens the borders of the image and it draws or points the viewer's eyes right towards the middle. Okay, makes sense? Great. All right, well, let's take this same image and come into Photoshop and do some dodging and burning in Photoshop. Now, there's, there's a great way, an easy way to do dodging and burning in Photoshop. They actually give you tools for it. 
You can see over here on the left, I've got a dodge tool and a burn tool. And when you select the dodge tool, the brush, a, a brush um, cursor is selected. And then you have the range that you can select up here and how much exposure or flow rate you want. And um, so you can set these things and then really you just start painting right on the right on the image. You know, and so with my dodge tool, I can come in here and brighten up these areas. And then with my burn tool, I can kind of do the exact same thing. I can come in and darken these. I've kept everything just at 11% to try to keep um, the flow not strong. Actually, this burn came in at 50, sorry. Um, and you can see how, how it's easy to, to screw things up if you're not paying attention to your settings. But I like to feather in the effect as much as possible. So, you know, you can do just a little bit in here as much as you want, and it's like a brush. You know, and the, the thing that, so this is, it's a real easy tool, great to use. You know, we went from that all the way down to that and it just creates the shadows are deeper the lights are brighter and it just creates more of an impact in the image the downside to using the dodge and burn tool here is that it did it all on the background layer so i have no control over you know what the 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 layer opacity or anything that happens with each one of these they're not separate they're all together on that one layer so sometimes what I'll do is I'll come down and I'll duplicate the background layer and and create a new layer for this to do my dodging and then create a new layer for burning the other thing that's kind of cool if you're a, a Tony Kuiper user TK action panels they have a couple of tools built into this that is the both the dodge and the burn tool so here is uh the burn tool when i select that it creates a transparent layer they, it names it burn and it selects the brush and then i come in and just select what opacity i want of that brush and then i start painting it in and i'll go through and i'll do this and life is great you know and i can toggle it on or off and see the effect Let's go ahead and put it back on. We'll do another layer up here. You know, and it's it's a great, easy way to do dodging and burning. And then if I add a burn layer in here, I'm still at 10%. We'll come in here and I'll just over, over exaggerate this. Um, and you know, we just real quickly, we went from that to that. That that's flat, that with depth and dimension. And as I go through and, and as I process the image, if I, if I think that maybe, let's say my burn layer was a little bit too severe, what I can do is change the opacity of the layer. I can dial it back a little bit. And that's why I like having separate layers for each one of these functions for dodge and for burn is that I can come in and dial these back if I got a little overzealous with what I was doing. So there's a couple other ways for you um, to do some dodging and burning of these images outside of Lightroom. And I think you have more control and more fine-tuned um, application of these effects in Photoshop than you do in Lightroom. So I hope you're starting to see some of the effects that you can bring just with this one image of adding some lights and some darks in very selected areas of the image to contour the landscape to bring out depth and definition and dimension for different elements in the landscape. So it works wonderfully and uh, let's go look at a few more images, okay? All right, so here's another image from the Palouse, and this is an even better example of the folds of the landscape and the lights and the darks in the landscape that you can use to bring that depth and dimension. This was shot from a long distance away. This was, I think, at 450 millimeter. 
And so there's a lot of atmospheric haze in the shot to begin with. But you can see the, the folds of the landscape right through here and the illuminated ridge tops, which those are the things that can bring depth to the image. One of the first things though, for an image like this that I will do to help accentuate the shadows and the lights and get rid of some of that atmospheric haze is I'll grab my dehaze slider and I'll start moving this a little bit. I'll start to clean it up. And when I do that, you can see the dramatic effect it has on the shadows and on the lights. So that's one of the first steps I'll do to bring depth and dimensionality into the image. And then from here, what I want to do is go into Photoshop, just because that's where I'm a little bit more comfortable working. Um, and I've got that fi more finer tuned control. So let's go ahead and open this image up in Photoshop and do a quick little edit on this. Okay, now I've got this image open in Photoshop, so I want to start doing some dodging and burning. And I'll use the, uh, the TK panel, and I'll put a dodge layer down and a burn layer down, close this up so you can see a little bit more. But let's go ahead and start with dodge. So I've got a relatively large brush. My opacity is at 10% because I want to feather the effects. And what I want to do is work on the tops of the ridges here. You can see, you can see um, just the sunlight kissing the tops of these of these ridges, and I just want to accentuate the light uh, just on the top. So I'll go through with a really light brush with white white paint because it's a dodge layer, and accentuate some of the lightness. This is a, even even at ten percent, it's a little bit much for me. So I'll go down to seven because again I want to feather in the effects as much as I can. So we'll go through here. And really, it's just tracing and outlining these the brighter parts of the images that I want to brighten up just a scooch. So we'll do that. There's a ridge down here. And this is all, folks, you know, to, to do this kind of work, you really just need to recognize the tonal values, the lights and the darks in the image. I look past the subject, I look past the composition, and my eyes are only looking at the tonal values in the image. So let's say I've got a little bit of, you know, the lights are there, I can toggle this layer on and off, you can see the difference, really brought up some brightness to that. Now let's go to the burn layer and darken some. So I select the burn layer, I make sure that my uh, foreground color is black, and the darks get affected a little bit more than the light, so I'm going to again turn my opacity down just a smidge, and I'm going to go through some of these darker areas and paint through this. Actually, I'm going to go back up to seven just a little bit. This big shadow right here, these shadow areas, this shadow, and I've got my, my right hand's on the mouse, but my left hand is on the bracket keys. So I can change the brush size as I need to on the fly without having to look down. And even up in here, I've got some darker areas that I want to really bring out. Right up through here. Right down in here. You know, and if I toggle this on and off, you can see how the, the shadows got a lot darker. So in just a couple of minutes, I went from a nice image to one that has more pop, more shape, more depth, and more dimension. So real easy with the dodge and the burn tools. All right, here's another uh, example. This one I shot just a few weeks ago in Iceland, and I was uh, shooting a glacier up in the national park there and uh, this was towards the afternoon and this really beautiful light was happening on the uh, right on the tips of the ice and so that is something that I wanted to shoot and, and, and accentuate in my compositions. This doesn't need a lot of processing but what it would benefit from is some dodging and burning. So again I'm going to put a dodge layer and a burn layer down and 
make sure my foreground brush is white my opacity is about seven percent and what i really want to do is brighten up the tips of these icebergs and even the face anywhere anywhere the sun is hitting i want to do some i want to do some brightening into this a little bit here this little tip and you know beyond the background there's a lot of light happening in the background but really the entire composition is the lower two-thirds and so I don't really want to brighten up this upper portion of this I really just want to stay focused right down here towards the middle and the bottom of the image and so I'll, I'll uh, just keep my work down here and you can you can start to see how this is brightening up those brighter areas so if I toggle the layer on and then off on and then off you know what I did lose with the with the dodge layer is you see how warm the light is there and when I dodged it it got I lost a little bit of that warmth so that's something that I would go back in and add some of that warmth back after I've done this dodge effect now let's go over to the burn layer and I want to darken some areas just to add a little bit of depth into this. So contrasting the real bright areas with some darker areas gives it a little bit more of a visual pop. You know, do this. I'm trying to be a little bit more subtle with my burn on this image. Um, just a little bit of nuance. You know, come and darken this up a little bit. This area right in here needs some help. So I'll toggle this on and off. So holistically, you know, in those just just those two layers, that's the finished item. That's the raw item. The raw item is kind of flat. It's not bad, but it's a little bit flat, but that has a lot more pop and pizzazz and depth and dimension. All right, here's another example from that same glacier with that same kind of light. Uh, I won't go through through the whole effect, but you can see this is the, the raw image as it, as it came out of the camera. And then with a little bit of dodging and burning, I go to that without, with, without, with whether you like that or not is up to you i'm just trying to show you some techniques to create some more definition and depth in the image and again you know i i uh, i dodged the brighter parts the tips of the icebergs and then the brighter ridges that i wanted to accentuate and then did some work in the shadows to help offset those brighter parts and to give it more dimension each one of those inter each one of those features but let's let's move on to you know another shot of the Palouse uh, that is this is all about layers right and you can see brighter layer darker layer brighter layer over here darker layer here and then the sky and this image was compressed this was again shot with a 100 to 400 millimeter lens and I want to bring back some of that depth that I was seeing because this is a massive landscape with this truck in the background. So one of the easiest ways to do that is with dodging and burning. So again, I'll go, uh, I'll go put a couple of dodge, put a dodge and a burn layer down there. And I'll do this real quick for you. Make sure that my white paint is selected. Then I'll go through and I'll just brighten this up. And to me, in this image, what's more important is the, is the dark parts, more so than the light. I like the tonal value of the lights, but it's the darks that really, to me, I want to accentuate. I'm going to actually bump this opacity up just a smidge. Let's go up to 10 and i'll just kind of make this really dark and what i can do is do multiple passes over the same area and get this where i want it in terms of darkness without you know a single brush stroke if i was to have a opacity of 50 percent and i did a brush stroke look at that that's nasty so 
That's why I tend to do uh, a little bit less opacity and just feather the effects in. And this hill back here I want to darken up. Again, I would be doing a lot more care with this, but I just wanted to kind of give you the effect of what we're doing. So there's the burn layer off and on. There's the dodge layer on and off. And collectively, what these things do is there's the flat image and there's a little bit of separation between each of the layers, which brings visual depth to the image. I think the other image uh, that I want to talk to you guys about is this particular one. So this is an interesting subject in terms of creating depth. It's got you know, subject matter wise, it has depth. It's got these foreground trees, it's got midground trees, it's got background trees, it's got background fog. So subject wise, it has depth. But tonally, if you look at the tonal values, the darks and the lights, it's pretty flat. And so one of the ways that I can add some pop and dimension into this is with dodging and burning. And again, you can do this in any tool that you want. Um, the techniques are the roughly interchangeable, but it's recognizing what to do, not how to do it. And so what I would like to do is brighten up the left-hand side of these leading trees and darken the right side. That's sort of my strategy to see if I can bring some depth and dimension into this, into this shot. So I'll go through with my dodge tool and I'll brighten these up just a little bit. This tree's smaller, so I only want to catch the left-hand side. So I'll de decrease my brush. And this, even, even just a little bit smaller, make sure just the left-hand side is, is brightened. And then with my burn tool, I will do the same thing, but on the other side of the tree. Oops, got to flip my brush around. And so we have more of a sense of light hitting the left-hand side of the tree and shadow on the right. And this brings some dimensionality to these foreground trees. Then what I might do is darken some of these background trees just a little bit to give it some visual weight. And just so you know, whenever you're dealing with foggy conditions like this, if I was to try to burn, or I'm sorry, dodge back here, lighten things up, the haze, because it covers everything, it really will have a, a profound, weird effect on the, the, uh, the dodge layer. So if I do a, a dodge brush stroke, the haze, um, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but it tends to disperse the, the effect just a little bit. So I have to be very, very careful when I'm working with foggy photos and using this technique of dodging and burning. So real quickly, I went from that to that. And what that does to me is that it brings these foreground trees a little bit closer. It brings more three-dimensionality to the foreground trees which, are, which is really the main subject of this image, and lets the background kind of recede away from them. So I brought some tonal depth into the image and not just subject depth into the image. All right, this last image I wanna talk about is, is, it's a little bit less about creating depth and it's more about shaping the light to really hone the viewer's eyes into where you want them to be. So, you know, if you look at this image, I think it's got some great depth. It's got this beautiful leading line right in the foreground, leads you out to the ocean, and then finally to the brightest part of the image, which is the sunset below the clouds out there. But look through the, you know, the bottom two thirds of this image, and it's kind of flat tonally. You know, these rocks on the left and the right hand side of the water channel are the same sort of mid-tones. The water channel itself, a little bit brighter, but still kind of in the same tonal family as the left and the right side. So what I want to do is create a little bit of separation between the two. 
So let me start with a burn layer. And what I want to do is I want to darken all of this stuff. I'm going to bump my opacity up a little bit and really darken this up. More so than I probably would in um, the finished image. But if I kind of darken that side, darken this side. Bang. So we went from that to that. And then the dodge layer, I'll do just a little bit of work on the front or on the on the leading line here and really kind of there's a little bit of a yellow tinge to the water. And with a with a dodge layer, I'll get rid of that, brighten it up a little bit more white and I'll really make this water pop. So we went from that to that and I got some great separation between the rocks on the left and the right and the water channel. Oop, wrong button. So there's that. There's the original image. And there it is with the dodge and burn. And then if I really, again, want to accentuate this, there happens to be a, a little vignette tool in the TK panel. And so what I'll do is I'll add a vignette to this image as well. So slight vignette. There's with it. There's without it. There's with it. There's without it. So that's another technique for shaping the light, create separation between these elements, uh, basically a tonal contrast between the darker sides and the brighter middle that really says, look here to the viewer, follow this channel all the way out. I know it's obvious, but these are just really subconscious tricks or subconscious tools that you can use to really hone in your story and your message in your composition. All right, folks, so, so there you go. There's some great examples about how to create some depth and dimension in your photographs. It's real simple, dodging and burning. Um, you can use the brush tool in Lightroom. You can use the dodge and burn tool in Photoshop, or if you have any sort of plugins that you use, do that. It's, it's, this is less about how to do something and more about what to do and why to do it. That's the important stuff for me in teaching photography is teaching you what to do, not how to do it. So hopefully this all makes sense. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave me uh, comments below and I will respond to you as soon as I can. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Alrighty. Bye-bye.